afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock, which is now, we're going to talk about the uh, history of rebound rumble and what's next with the GDC. So we're going to open it up for questions, but I also wanted to bring up uh, some of the other members of the GDC that we have. Uh, Linda Wallace, who is our uh, rotating member, and thank you. Linda, come on up. Uh, Kate Pilot, who's part of my staff, and Colin Fultz. Um, and Colin happened to not only come from an FRC team, but mentored a team and is now part of the FRC engineering organization. So the uh, entire, well not the entire, but a chunk of the game design is up here. And we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Rebound Rumble and certainly answer any of the questions that you have. Uh, yeah, big crowd, I know. <laughs> but that's okay. It's not about the numbers, it's about the quality of the crowd that's out there. So, um, Rebound Rumble. Uh, First of all, how many people out there like Rebound Rumble, this year's game? Okay, good. It's pretty consistent. And all the regions, I've gone to one each week, and uh, most of the, the feedback has been very, very positive. So at this point in time, we're feeling fairly good about the game. We never really feel good about the game until Sunday. Um, but uh, you know, right at this point in time, we're, we're pretty happy. The only problem with it is right now, we've probably set the bar about this high, and next year, the game has to be even better, as we all know. So the challenge continues for the GDC to you know, really produce a fine product. Um, this past year, uh, we decided that we were going to actually create two games, a game for 2012 and a game for 2013. And part of the reason that we decided to do that was, if anybody recalls, um, last year's game, we ended up, unfortunately, still writing the rules to, uh, to the 2011 game all the way up to the Monday before kickoff, which kind of puts a little pressure on us and kind of puts a little pressure on the teams because it doesn't give us a lot of time to uh, review everything. So from a timeline, we really push the timeline way too far. The other thing is that, as you noticed, a lot of the game pieces that we use um, are relatively low cost, mass produced, and they usually don't come from the United States. They're usually produced in China or Singapore or someplace like that. And for us to order the stuff ahead of time so that we can really get some decent pricing on it and not have to airship the stuff because of uh, the timing involved, we really needed to push the games further and further ahead. So our intent last year was to try to come up with two games and then would always be one game ahead. So we did in fact push very hard and part of the deal was, okay, if we can't come up with a second game, we were going to use a game called Aim High as a replay game. And the thought process was that last year I took a poll of all the teams and the number one game that was voted on by all the teams was Aim High. So we said, okay, look, if we can't find anything else, we'll, we'll kind of change Aim High a little bit, do some things, and, and end up using it as a backup kind of game. Well, we didn't have to do that because we ended up creating this year's game, Breakaway, and the 2013 game. So we were successful pretty much in doing both. Now, <clears throat> since this is full disclosure, um, the game design has been, the committee has been so, so I guess, uh, has received such great praise on the, uh, the 2012 game. We're now re-looking at the 2013 game and saying, well, geez, can we do better than this? I mean, let's face it, almost everybody in the game design committee is an engineer, except for one or two people. And what do engineers do? They always make it better. So we're re-looking as to whether or not the game that we have for 2013 is really up to the standards or whether we got to go back to the drawing board and re-look at 2013 and come out with something with water in it. I mean, with something that uh, would be very challenging. So um, one of the things that you may not know is in the past years, and this is kind of interesting, we used to have members of the GDC or members of the first staff in little wooden boxes with wheels on it representing robots. So when we would actually go through an iteration of the game, which we do many, many, many times, we, uh, we in the past have used these little box types things with wheels on it, you know, little feet going as fast as they can and doing whatever it was that robots are supposed to do um, to try to prove that we could end up having robots do whatever it was that we designed the game for. We've moved away from that and I think it was either last year or the year before, we actually have enough robots in first headquarters built with enough configurations and everything that we get a chance now to actually test the game with real live robots. 
and we're always in the process of changing configurations and coming up with different um, types of robots and stuff like that. But um, we do we do try to uh, have multiple tests of the game before we, we release it to everybody. The unfortunate thing is, in reality, the first time we really get to test, to beta test the game is what we call week zero. Week zero is usually that weekend before Ship Tuesday or before the you know, ceasing work Tuesday. And what we normally do is we have one or two events where we actually set up FRC fields. And this is the first time that we see your robots running the game in, in our field, in our configuration, in our field management system. Um, so that makes it like a week and a half to two weeks before the actual first event, which is not a real long time. Um, so we try to get everything wrapped up and make it as best as we can before then. We do learn things at week zero, so sometimes we'll tweak things right at the end there. But the intent is to try not to change anything. Um, one of the interesting things, I mean, one of the questions that I was asked before was, what about Connect? I mean, we're not really seeing Connect being used as much as we really thought it was going to be used. Well, I think, and I, I don't want to speak for all of game design, but I think our initial vision was with Connect, that we thought that here's a typical scenario, that maybe you end up having two of the three alliance partners having the balls inside the robot are being actively used, so the other two balls from the Blue Alliance goes on the center bridge. Red Alliance, probably the same thing. You have two of the three robots that probably have a use for, you know, launching the balls or moving the balls or dumping them. The other two balls go on the center bridge, so now you got six balls potentially on the center bridge. Yeah, maybe sometimes five, maybe sometimes four, but more than just the two that we now see. And the vision was sort of, okay, you know, one robot runs up and does something, the other two robots shoot balls, and somebody comes back, taps the bridge, and these four, five, six balls go randomly distributing themselves across the field. Well, what better to use than connect to go find these balls, pick them up, and score? Well, we didn't quite get it exactly right, because what we realized was now everybody is using the, the basketballs, and there's only two balls on the bridge, so one of the the Alliance partners shoots the two balls, they come back, they tap the bridge, collect two more balls, shoot those two balls, everybody has uh, you know, control of all of the, the game pieces, and you know, if you want to use Connect, then okay. But the intent initially was that it would be great for going out and finding those random balls that happen to be scattered on that side of the court. We don't always get it right, so next year's another year. But don't go throwing those Connects away, because you never know what you might see again. Um, does anybody have any specific questions, or does anybody else in the staff want to have a story to tell, or anything about something interesting about the <clears throat> the rebound rumble game? <laughs> 